Okay, our last point that we're going to cover in this uh, triptych of business brilliant principles that you have stories for um, is this last one is a, a very important one. We mentioned it. It's about failure. Nothing succeeds like failure. And when we survey the, the middle class, when we ask them the question, have setbacks and failures taught you what you're good at? Only 28% of them say yes to that question. When we survey the, the wealth, very wealthy, we see that 80, 90, 100% of them would say yes to that question. What's this gap, or what's your impression of this gap between most people who say, I don't want to learn from my failures, I'd rather avoid them altogether? It, it's not even learning from, you know, it's taking responsibility for the failure. So I took this company from zero to $120 million in eight years, and then in eight months, I proceeded to take the company from $120 million to zero. Um, and it wasn't funny then, it's still not funny. Um, <laughs> and it was th that delivery company that I talked about that I built uh, to do that and had 5,000 employees. And I could have blamed it on a lot of things. I could have blamed it on the advent of the stock market crash in 1987. And uh, one of the businesses, uh, uh, the biggest part of the business was financial printers. They had helped drag the company down. I could have blamed it on the advent of the fax machine, which was just coming into being and then. So there was less business uh, with more companies chasing that less business. And I, that, that could have been the fault. But I thought about it and I had to say, what responsibility did I take in that happening? And when I looked at it... Looked uh, at it in real time or in... As looked at it in real time. I mean, I looked at it and said, okay, what did I contribute to make this happen? And what I contributed was I took the credit from the good part of the company and pledged the, uh, to the company that went bad. Circumstances. You can't change circumstances. You know, they're going to happen. They're going to happen all the time. So what I discovered was that if I didn't take that money from that company to lend it to this part of the company, I would have had a terrible time, but I would have been able to survive. So that lesson that I learned and looked and did introspection helped me in my future companies. Because what I did in the future was I never took credit or money from one company and leveraged it against another company. If I ever wanted to go into another business, and I've gone into many of them, and I've had some failures, but not as colossal as that one, uh, what I do today is I take money out separately, build the company separately. If I figure it's gonna cost me a million dollars to build that company, I put another 25% aside. And once I go through that money, I don't, I close the company down. I don't pledge the company from one company to the other. And, I, and if I think my success in building these companies was exactly that from that one lesson I learned that I took responsibility for uh, helping that bankrupt company. So most people will, will look at a, a, a catastrophic failure like that. 5,000 employees, you know, obviously a lot of soul searching that needs to take place after something like that. And they'll say, well, Norm must not, not, must not feel things like I do because they feel and they have failures, they have a bad day at work, they have a maybe they get fired and they, it's crushing to them, and you seem to bounce back and then go on and build another business. They, they must look at you and say that you're not like the rest of us. It's not true. I mean, it's crushing. I mean, I went home and cried. It was, uh, it was devastating that I had a failure. I didn't think in terms of that. I, I, nobody ever told me that I had to learn from my failures. It wasn't popular in those days, you know? And um, no, it was crushing. Uh, but you know, when you become an entrepreneur, a couple of things happen. Uh, um, you sort of you sort of become unemployable. You have a lot of bad habits. You know, you don't have to answer to anybody. You know, um, you get up and go to work anytime you want. Of course, most of us work 70 or 80 hours a week, so it doesn't really matter in those things. And you have no discipline whatsoever. So I don't know who wants an employee like that. So I I didn't see any alternatives but to go back into business. Well, and then that led you to City Storage, the, 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 the Correct. maybe maybe the biggest business you ever built. Um, I don't know if it's the biggest business I ever built, but it was certainly the most profitable when I sold it. Yeah. Um, and so there was something about the lesson and the experience in Perfect Courier, the messenger business, that led you to try again only this time. In addition to getting your finances straight, you also refined the business model at some level. I refined the business model in, in a lot of levels, and but I stayed in the same type of business, a service business, that I had learned, that I loved, that I knew I could make a lot of money in doing it. So, um, you know, and I learned a lot of lessons from it. I, I, and, and some of the lessons I've learned are, I, I even do it today. I mean, you know, I have three criterias for going into business and I never knew that until I looked backwards. 
and the criteria is where the business model or concept has to be over 100 years old. You talked about not inventing anything new. You don't have to invent anything new. I mean, there's lots of businesses around that you can pick up from. You've got to do it smarter, better, quicker. You know, so that's the first criteria. The second criteria is I find a niche within that business, something that separates me from everything else. And the third thing is that I uh, sit on the edge of technology. Technology drives my businesses. I'm not a technological business itself, but I use technology to drive those businesses. So if I find an antiquated business, I put technology to it, and those are the three criteria.